customers and because you're so in, in touch with people in Italy that that you tend to help people out if they're planning a trip or you have people at home and uh, you, you have no idea <laughs> I mean every time I say oh you know I was just in Italy but I'm going next week or I'm going a month please let me have your email address because I'm gonna send you to the right place I'm gonna send you not touristy place but the real thing the right where you're just you gonna go. have I'm from Roma so I'm gonna send to this pizzeria everybody speaks Italian nobody speaks English so I want them to experience the real thing rather than being there as a tourist and go to the normal touristy place. So what are some good spots? If people are watching at home and they're like, oh, I have a, a, I have a vacation to Italy. <laughs> well, in, um, there's really a restaurant in Rome and it's uh, near Stazione Termini railroad station. It's called Trattoria Monti. It's owned by uh, a mother and the two, uh, her two, uh, two uh, sons. They're on the floor. She's in the kitchen. It's like going to a house where the mother is preparing everything oh, from scratch. That sounds wonderful. You know, they called me crying on the phone and said the food was just amazing experience, the warmth, how they were receiving us, like it's it's spectacular. That's how you build a relationship with with guests too. And, and I'm so proud of with all my passion to offer that to them. Either a Massimo or a Pane Vino. Is being able to just yes, make those connections. It's phenomenal. It's well it's almost a reason for, for, for this life. I don't know. It, it's so it's so amazing. So you just opened up the second restaurant. How how is that going, and why did you decide to do it? Oh, uh, Massimo is just phenomenal. We it really took off beautifully. Um, uh, we had Panevino, who's been there for fifteen years, been established one of the best, pre probably the best Italian restaurant in Providence. Forgive me for saying that. Um, but then we wanted to Massimo Panevino is mainly focused on uh, this, uh, those traditions and founded on family recipe from the south of Italy. We wanted to offer something more broad and so we said, well, you know what we could do? We could go to Italy, take an Italian restaurant today, move it to Providence and offer it to our guests. Um, so we wanted to give it also a cuisine that spans to each and every regions of Italy as opposed to the oh, south okay. of Panevino. Um, and what you will find today if you went to Rome into a restaurant, today's traditions. So this is what Massimo is about. And it's about the high quality ingredients, all the efforts in presenting them in a very simple way where you really taste that ingredient. And again, it's balanced, not overpowering the other ingredients, just like wine. Just, yeah, yeah. simple, clean. Simple, clean, high quality. Seasonality is very important. Yes. Do you and look for those fresh those fresh ingredients? We look for uh, local ingredients, importing in, uh, ingredients like we have a burrata that is fresh flown in from Puglia. Mm -hmm. We literally send somebody to pick it up at the airport, we bring it in and we straight to the to the plate. You know, farmers to table, Italy to table. Italy to table. Yes, nothing in between. Straight to that plate. And just they rave about it because there's so much flavor in the mind. It's an explosion. A symphony of flavors that is just amazing. And you're on Federal Hill. What do you think about the whole new Little Italy uh, possibility with the rebranding? I'm. I'm uh, I love Federal Hill. I, you know, I'm Italian, I'm Roman, so it, it makes me feel as if I was at home. But um, why not call it Italy? I don't see anything wrong with it. I think you know, it could actually put an extra emphasis on the fact that you want to find everything is about Italy. So you like all the Italian food, the Italian restaurants. I. Literally, I'm really happy to hear that you might go towards that direction. That's great. And who do you who do you invite to, to come into these restaurants? If you if you're not really uh, familiar with Italian food, you know sometimes it can be intimidating if you're going to a restaurant and you can't read a menu. I mean, do you welcome anybody to come in and give it a try? Absolutely, I welcome everybody. Um, each and every individual. But it's very important as soon as you welcome somebody. You have to embrace it with so much warmth, so so much hospitality. You have to make him feel at home, at ease. There's no uh, stuffy environment. Every, everything flows with love and passion. How can you not like it after that? So where are some places that you like to go eat? What, if you're not eating Italian food, what do you like to eat? Um, I like to eat sushi. Sushi. Yeah, yes. I'm a big fan of sushi. There's some good sushi right yeah, here. Yeah, I'm with absolutely, you on that. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I love um, fresh seafood. Nice. But I'm also uh, I like meat as well. <laughs> there you go. And what do you prepare at home? Because you're always at your restaurants and but what I'm, do you do at home? I love to cook at home. Um, I have a. I'm up in the uh, Burville, 
So that the area is beautiful. So I have a, this beautiful kitchen. I can see when I'm cooking the birds and all that. So I get a spy, a little glass of wine. I like to take my time and putting all the ingredients together. I cook mostly Italian. Um, I'm Roman, so I cook a lot of uh, Roman dishes like spaghetti alla carbonara uh, that we offer at Massimo, uh, Bugatina Matriciana, Salti in Bocca Romana. These are all. And I don't know what any of this is, know, but I'm it sorry. sounds delicious. Yeah. And it sounds amazing yeah. when you say it. <laughs> yeah, I love to cook and I like to uh, prepare meat in the oven, let it simmer so the meat gets really tender and absorbs all the flavor. I cook with a lot of wine. I drink. Oh, nice. Well, I drink the wine, but I also cook with it. That's that sounds good. So uh, when you're using when you're when you're cooking at home or whether you're at your restaurants, what are some of your influences? Or do you take when people are like, oh, I don't know what I really want? Uh, do you take suggestions from people if they're like, I really like to see this? Yes, um, I, I, I do take. It's important that we get feedback from guests. It, it, we based. Uh, through their feedbacks, I think we can only uh, improve our restaurant. It's, we, I want to I wanna hear what they think about this dish. I want to hear what they think about the wine, um, the environment, the music, how, how cozy it is. Yes, absolutely. For us to take their suggestions is really, really important. And be very accommodating, even though we have a tradition that we honor. But should they want to have something that's different from what we normally serve, by all means, yes, please, absolutely. We offer something, but be very accommodating which is very important in days. So you have two restaurants now. What are your goals continuing to move forward? Oh, I mean, it's been, I, it's been a big, I have busy to, time. I have to talk to Esther and Joe. I, I mean, I know that they're, they're, I love them. They're, they're beautiful, amazing people, husband and wife, and they, do such, they did such a great job with Pana Vino. For me to come on board was just an honor and a privilege. Um, but um, if Massimo continues in that direction, and then I think we're gonna have to find another place, maybe a little, little market. You know, we're thinking of a little market. Really? Yeah. And yeah, so. where might that? Oh, I'm I'm assuming Providence. Yes. But uh, right now we have Massimo going in a great direction, and everything seems to be tuned in. And so as soon as we have a little more time, because it's time consuming. Oh There's, my goodness. It's a it's a big Massimo is bigger than Panevino. So we have the upstairs, we have a lot of events, we have the downstairs, so it's a lot of work. As soon as, you know, we find time, we might, do, might get ourselves into that oh, and project. Is there maybe a space that you're looking at, or um, are we no, the too idea, far? No, <laughs> the idea is there, but, okay. uh, but no, we haven't looked for anything right now. And so what would that be like, We're continuing to go to Italy and bringing in fresh products, or what would something uh, like that look like? Absolutely, like a showcase, all the ingredients, the products that we have uh, mm. for our guests. A little bit of retail, a little bit of... If you want to hang out over there and eat it at the, at, but just a little cozy place, nothing too big. That sounds like uh, yeah. something. A little fun. Italian market. And how often are you are you in communication with people in Italy? Every day. Every day. Every day. Uh, I talk to wineries. I talk to farmers. I talk to my parents. <laughs> I talk to my friends. Uh, it's every day. It's a, I have a constant link um, that I can, unfortunately I can't I can't break it you know it, it's always there it's a lifeline it's your okay. bloodline it's yeah. your it's your stream it is it is my dream absolutely and um so you talked a little bit about your your goals and your ambitions and we do have that wine dinner coming up at massimo that is this coming friday at 7 p.m the 24th and uh, do you need tickets or reservations or anything like that are we almost at full uh it's almost sold out uh, we have already approximately 70 guests, yes. 70? 70, wow. yeah, it's unbelievable. We are so happy about that. Um, and the, I think the event is going to be just phenomenal. We have Jim Morrison, who's the direct importer of Montenitoli, the winery we're featuring with the, with the region. Um, and this is a little educational but fun. Uh, for those who learn a little more, more about wine, uh, the interesting learning how to taste the wine, how to how to select the wine, how the wine is made. So we just want to increase their knowledge of wine in a very fun uh, way. Nothing like you go to school. Over, it, nothing overbearing. Overbearing, nothing. It's just fun. Eating and drinking and talking about Italy, talking about the winery, and a few tips on on wine knowledge. How many? Uh, how much wine do you go through if you're going through so many people? Like, how do you prep for that? Well, we order accordingly, yes. Uh, we give, it's called flights. Each and every um, uh, course has a uh, type of wine. 
Uh, it's approximately three to four ounces of serving. Um, it's a four course dinner, so we're talking about at least a couple, a couple of glasses of wine. Yeah. We don't want to overdo that, otherwise, you know, the palate goes off. But yeah, that's how we structure it. Yeah, I'm thinking, cause I'm thinking when I was planning for my wedding, how much I had to order and just yeah. all the prep work that goes into planning these huge events yes. and what your kitchen must be like. Yeah. It must be very busy when you're planning oh, yeah. for yeah. and then continuing to have the restaurant open as well. Yeah. Uh, so Because we have the downstairs over on Friday as well. So, so a busy night planned for A busy night. Busy night, but fun. I'm excited. It sounds wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I oh, really it's appreciate absolutely it. absolutely my pleasure. Uh, let's take a picture so we can put that up on Facebook. All right, thank you so much, Cristiano. Uh, You're very welcome. You are from Panivina and Massimo. I appreciate your time. Thank you thank so much you for so coming much. in. I appreciate thank you. it. So, pleasure being here. Uh, in either the restaurants or the wine dinner, uh, you can check them out. Thank you thank so you. much.